If you watched my previous video where I share my YouTube earnings so far, you might know that I can't even pay my rent from it. But since I'm a tech nerd and I just love buying new things, I thought it would be a great idea to put this huge screen inside of our small living room. So yeah, behind me you can see this 120 inch screen and although it looks like a regular TV, it actually isn't. This is a projected picture from the Epson LS500, a 4K laser projector. As you can see, I am standing directly in front of the screen and there's no shadow. The fact that this is even possible is because the Epson LS500 is an ultra short throw projector and sits just about three feet away from the wall, which makes it very easy to set up because you don't need to run any cables all the way to the other side of the room. And ceiling mounting is also something you don't have to worry about. There are some other ultra short throw projectors out there that can sit even closer to the wall and are still able to project such a huge image, but the LS500 has some benefits, especially when it comes to brightness, response times, and overall bang for buck, and that's why we have decided to get this one instead of any other model out there. As you can see right here, we built a small table so that we don't have to move the entire drawer away from the wall to get to the desired distance for that specific screen size. Once again, I want to put an emphasis on how nice it is that you don't have to run any cables through your walls to connect them to a ceiling mounted projector. This looks really clean and has some more benefits over traditional projectors that we'll be taking a look at later in this video. But now let's get started with the most important specs of the LS500 laser projector, which is the core of this 120 inch screen setup in our small living room right here. The LS500 has three HDMI ports, two on the back with one of them having an audio return channel for something like a soundbar, and one in the front which is used for the dedicated streaming stick that you get if you buy the Android TV version. This is awesome because you can then just watch Netflix or stream your own TV shows from your home NAS using Plex without the need for any additional devices like a console for example. This makes the LS500 a pretty smart projector in my opinion, as it supports everything that I would expect from such a device in 2022. You can screencast images and videos from your smartphone, watch YouTube YouTube videos and even use the built-in mic inside of the remote to search for your favorite content. Although this is something you will find in pretty much any TV that is produced at this point in time, not all projectors have these features, so I am very happy that I can put a check on that with the LS500 right here. Epson rates the laser inside of the LS500 as having a lifetime of roughly 20,000 hours in eco mode. To put things more into perspective, let's just say you're using the projector for 3 hours on average per day. That would mean that the laser should survive for more than 18 years, which we all know is far above the lifetime cycle of such a device anyways, as it will most likely be replaced by newer tech faster than that. Now let's talk about the screen. Do you really need an ambient light reduction screen? Before I answer the question, let me first explain how these types of screens work. ALR screens have a fine textured surface on them that is painted in a neutral light color from one side and a dark one from the other side. This smart technique reflects the light that comes from the ultra short throw projector that sits just below the ALR screen perfectly, while it swallows most of the ambient light that comes from other directions. Epson calls its model an ALR screen, but technically it is a a CLR screen, a so-called ceiling light reduction screen, which mainly blocks light that comes from the ceiling. Just look at how the flashlight of my smartphone reflects on this screen right here in a pitch black room. This should give you a pretty good idea of how these screens work. There are even more advanced versions of such screens on the market that can reflect light from even more directions and all have their pros and cons to it. Now let's get back to the question. Do you really need an ALR screen? Well, it depends. But don't worry, I got you covered. The LS500 outputs 4000 lumens and is very bright even during the day. Before we had this huge 120 inch ambient light reduction screen from Epson, which by the way is called the Silverflex registered ultra 120 inch ambient light rejecting super mega screen. And yes, I do know it sounds kind of absurd, but this is the actual name. The contrast wasn't as great during both day and night, and we had a lot of reflections in our room as soon as it got dark, which was kind of distracting. So yeah, the ALR screen does make a difference, but it comes with a hefty price tag and if you're on a tight budget, I would say that you could probably live without it. Especially if you're only watching movies and playing games after the sun has already set and there's minimal light hitting the projected area from above. It is important that your wall is as even as possible though, because many USD projectors tend to suffer from unsharp corners if the uniformity of your wall isn't the best. To maximize contrast, even during the day, we decided to get some blinds for our windows, which is something I can highly recommend. They're not very expensive, but the difference they make is huge. Especially if you're watching low light content like a horror movie for example, where it is absolutely necessary to have a dark room as otherwise your projector won't be able to create enough contrast. One thing to note here is that a projector doesn't come even close to something like an OLED TV in terms of contrast and dark scenes do sometimes have a slightly blue tint to it. 
it is definitely a trade-off, but I personally prefer the bigger overall screen size over the benefits that OLED has to offer. And if you're using an LR screen, the projected image lands on a slightly darker surface, which reflects less of the light and therefore creates more contrast than on a completely white wall, which makes the trade-off less of a problem in most scenarios. On top of that, OLEDs are quite expensive and suffer from other problems like screen burn-in, for example, which is something you don't have to worry about with a UST projector like the LS500. All right, so now that we got the visuals out of the way, what about the sound? There is a built-in speaker inside of the LS500, but I wouldn't recommend using it, and even Epson says that you should get a good set of speakers or a soundbar instead. Since our living room is pretty small, a dedicated multi-speaker home theater solution wasn't an option for us. While I was going through different reviews on the web, I found the Samsung HWQ900A, which comes with a pretty long soundbar and a big subwoofer. The sound is better than anything I've heard so far on a soundbar, and the woofer creates some nice low end, which makes everything more cinematic. We mounted the soundbar to the wall slightly below the screen so that it sits at about the same height as we do when we're on the couch. Overall, I do like the aesthetic of the setup, but I wish the projector wouldn't have to be so far away from the wall. It does have some benefits over other USD projectors though, as I mentioned in the beginning, and if you're someone who likes to play some games from time to time, you will definitely appreciate the brightness and fast response times of the LS500 projector. And it's also not the most expensive one if you're on a tight budget, so yeah, that's another pro for the LS500 projector. But why should you get such a big screen and projector in the first place? And is it worth all the money? First of all, gaming and watching movies on such a big screen is an absolutely different experience because it feels like actually going to the cinema. The immersion is just on a whole nother level with this setup and something I don't wanna miss out on in our own small living room right here. I've honestly never experienced anything like that with gaming before, and being the huge Final Fantasy VII fan I am, playing the remake on that 120 inch screen was that nice touch of luxury I didn't even know I needed in my life. If you like to just chill on the couch with a couple of friends and play some local split screen games, you will love this setup. At this size, everyone has their own 60 inch screen in a full player local split screen game, which might be kinda overkill, but hey, it's a lot more fun like that. We have played quite many rounds of Rocket League on the PS5 that is connected to the projector here, and so far the experience has been flawless and all of our friends are loving it. Because the LS500 is so bright even in daylight, we often use it for presentations in our business. And the best part about this is that I can stand directly in front of the projector without throwing any shadows. Since the projector is connected to my PC that is sitting in our office behind two walls from here, and I connected a USB extension cable to it that hosts a Bluetooth connector for my wireless keyboard, I can easily navigate through presentations and projects of all kinds. On top of presentations, you could also use this to watch video tutorials or courses together with your team, like we do from time to time. Overall, I am really pleased with our new setup. You wouldn't believe how our entire neighborhood looked at us when the screen was dropped off on three pallets in our parking lot though. Thankfully, getting it up into the second floor wasn't that hard as the package itself wasn't too heavy and the ALR screen was all rolled up inside of it. Putting the ALR screen together was a real challenge and mounting the soundbar in the correct position wasn't the most fun I had in life so far, but it was definitely worth it. And I honestly can't wait for the challenges we will be facing when we move out of this apartment someday and have to do everything backwards again. To be honest with you, I really hope that this will never happen. Since we got this screen, we also got rid of all other TVs in our apartment because it's a lot more fun to watch movies on the projector instead. I do understand that this setup is not for everyone, but for the ones that are interested in something similar, I really hope that this video was helpful for you guys. If you wanna see more specific content about this setup on things like gaming or perhaps even video editing, then please let me know in the comments down below. And if you have any more questions, then don't hesitate to ask. I typically answer all comments within just a few hours. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.